All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Hellenes and Barbaroi, welcome to the stream. Tonight's going to be a special one. It's going to also be a little short, or on the shorter side, I should say. Uh, we are nearing the end of the Persian invasions. Hello, hello. Um, so, a little recap. Uh, let's actually go into let's go into the game and for this recap. So, last. Oh, my goodness. How dare I even begin the recap before we make a sacrifice? Um, sing goddess, muse of wisdom, please let this stream be educational and may we all learn something that we can bring back to our current lives. This baby Yoda is getting so much abuse, thank goodness. And we're going to see a lot of sacrifices today at the Battle of Plataea. Anyway, recap. So, we are here uh, in the Saronic Gulf. And last time, we saw the Battle of Salamis. So the Battle of Salamis is the epic naval battle uh, uh, between the Persian invading force and the Greek fleet, uh, led primarily by Themistocles and his Athenians. Um, this was extremely important. Oh, I'm probably going the wrong way. Uh, or is this my bird? Let's just pretend this is my bird. Uh, so we're going this way, and in the Straits of Salamis, was where these two fleets met, and the width of the straits was narrow enough so that the uh, Persian numbers were not able to overcome the uh, the superior discipline of the Greeks. Uh, we played this in class last uh, Friday, and it didn't go so well for the Greeks. I think that's mostly my own fault. Um, the the proportion was about similar. The Greeks out, were outnumbered by the Persians three to one, but the Persians, if we remember, um, well, that's that's kind yippy skippy. Um, the Persians were sleepless, and their uh, boats were crashing into each other. So the uh, they were fouled, their oars were fouled, and the um, they weren't able to maneuver. Kind of like what the, what happened with the Spanish Armada against the the English uh, defense forces in 1588. The superior numbers actually proved to be a major hindrance. Um, however, uh, in class that that was not so much the case. And the way that I've set it up, the Persians pretty handily destroyed the Greek defenses. Um, or at least most of them very quickly in the first turn. Uh, that said, the Greeks are much more powerful because they've turned a lot more homework. So the Greeks began to wage a war of destruction one-on-one, -on -one, and uh, we've got these Greek students uh, absolutely tearing things up. We have over here, um, this was important, Xerxes uh, had some sort of uh, promontory set up. Might have even been up here. I wonder if... This is a special location, but Xerxes set up his throne over here so he could see. Uh, I believe it was the opposite way around, wasn't it? Didn't did not Solly kill you? Um, or maybe maybe both. <laughs> um, oh, getting getting some uh, get some drama in the chat. This is good. So <laughs> um, so Xerxes is up here. Indeed, abandoned watchtower. Let's just pretend that's where Xerxes is hanging out. Uh, although maybe it was closer here, so he could actually see the naval engagement. Um, after Atsali's, uh, no, after two of the Greeks <laughs> lost their ships, their navy, they landed and they burned Xerxes, uh, they burned the whole area, these groves and trees around where Xerxes was sitting, and he ended up fleeing. So rather than lose the battle to, and then flee, uh, he actually won the battle, but fled for his life. So that's uh, the recap. And here we have our, we find ourselves, uh, this is an abandoned Persian trireme. Remember, this game is set 50 years after the events that we are talking about currently. And so this trireme has been around for a little bit. But this is a Persian trireme um, that the game has given us uh, off the coast of Salamis. The wreckage would have been immense and would could have been found all over the place. So uh, after this, uh, after the Battle of Salamis, the Persians retreat to up north to Thessaly. Cut off his nose to spite his face. Um, here we have Megara, and we are not going to take a look at this, but instead we're going to travel north. 
uh, over to here. Okay, so in the meantime, the Persians retreat from Attica. They have lost a great deal of their ships, and because of that, their army is not able to be resupplied effectively. And so the... Um, and so Xerxes says, hey, I'm not sticking around in this, in the back at, back ass end of nowhere over in Greece. I'm going to return to my empire, right? I'm not going to sit in Greece over the winter. But he leaves Mardonius, uh, his main general and the number one Greek uh, fighter in the army. He even, he even, um, he even, ooh, this is a cool area. Mardonius even speaks a little bit of Greek. He is given charge of the forces that remain, and he's able to pick the, um, the forces from the entire army. So he picks uh, many of the best warriors, including the immortals. I'm actually amazed that he's able, that Xerxes allows him to keep these immortals. Uh, but he does, and along with a number of other warriors from Asia. I think I may have gone too far, but this, as we can see, is the Attic countryside. And this is one of the reasons that the Persians retreat, is the entrance to Attica uh, is very narrow, and so they could easily become trapped here. If you look at the map, there are, there's this area um, over here, and I think there's one area over here. Um, but the, the way through, yeah, look at this. We actually might have to go around. We're going we're gonna to backtrack. Um, Um, let's see, but Mardonius is in the midst of picking the troops that will stay and, uh, and escorting Xerxes north. He ends up going to Thessaly. I've got a question in the chat. What rights did women have during this time? It really depends. Uh, we've seen in the stream the, uh, the women of Sparta, who were quite powerful. Uh, they really ran society. They were able to inherit property, which ends up being a massive boon. They become very, very wealthy, um, especially because their, their husbands are always dying in combat. Um, they could they could inherit from their husbands and then marry another guy and then inherit from him as well. So women ended up becoming the most powerful uh, landowners. And by the middle of the 4th century, were by far the most powerful people in Sparta um, and were pulling a lot of shots. Unfortunately, we don't really know that much about the society beyond what we or about the place and role that women played in Spartan society, because that's they're not the focus of a lot of the histories that come down to us. Um, but we do know from Aristotle, Aristotle writes about the government of Sparta and the society, and he says it's a huge problem that we have this incredible, uh, this incredible inequality. I think he also, he's freaked out about women having uh, the, the, this economic power. That was not normal in Greece. But... Um, <laughs> But he also recognizes that Sp Spartan society, which is predicated on r equality, the Spartan citizens are called homoioi, which means equals. A Spartan society predicated on equality cannot s survive when some small group of people um, are consolidating their wealth generation after generation. So the women were, were powerful in Sparta. They had relatively equal white rights. They, they Now, I should say equal equal rights, but they were separate but equal, right? Women are going to have very different stations. Uh, they're going to have more different religious functions. They're going to be singing and dancing and playing music and having a good time while the men are training for war. They're still going to be required to exercise, but they are going to be out in public. Now, that's a long answer to one part of your question. The other part of your question uh, goes, let's talk about Athens. Athenian women had very, very few rights. Uh, they were cloistered. They were uh, not allowed to go outside. Their rights were quite constrained. And um, and yeah, so they were, their position was very similar to that of a woman in a strict Muslim country today. They had to cover their faces. Uh, they could not cavort or talk to people in public. They had to do all of their socializing behind closed doors. Um, now, I'm sure there was a very rich social life of Athenian women, but it was incredibly circumscribed. The Jerusalem were very powerful, um, and it really, it depends on how we're talking about power. The informal power of the women in Sparta was considerable. They could make a lot of arrangements. They could influence the Jerusia. The Jerusia 
you know, ostensibly all had wives, um, and the basic fabric of society was going to be somewhat controlled by, by Spartan women, while the political decisions would not be. Spartan women did not have a voice in the politics of the time. Nevertheless, there are a lot of other ways that um, power can be exerted. If you think about today, think about the power of the Senate and Congress versus the power of uh, Fortune 500 companies, the 500 biggest companies in America. They're both powerful, but they have different roles to play. So, um, at this time, we have the Persians retreating up into Boeotia, north to Thessaly, and then um, they begin to move back south. Um, at this time, the Persians send an ambassador to the Athenians saying, hey, join our side, Medes with us, and uh, we will make you masters of all Greece and we'll give you a territory of your desire. Um, and, and the Athenians, they're interested. Um, however, they use this more to tell the Spartans that they need to do a better job than uh, actually taking it seriously. This guy Lycidas, um, or Lycides, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, he actually, in this council of Athenians, says, hey, maybe we should actually entertain this offer. And because he, is, because he, says, he, dis, he says, hey, maybe we should, we should meet eyes, the Greeks stone him. The Athenians stone him to death. And then the Athenian women, um, I just said that they are all like closer in their house. Well, this time, Ath all of Athens has uh, retreated to Salamis. The entire population is in exile. And so uh, the Athenian women band together and massacre his Lycides kids and a wife, and they stone them to death as well. So here we are outside of Plataea. We see more ravaged crops. Um, and um, at this time, the Persians are making their way towards Boeotia. So here we are. We're going to take a, we're going to go down. Let's see. Panoramos. We want to go to the battleground of Plataea. So first, I think what we'll do is we'll go here. Um, we're gonna we're finding our way towards. And I'm gonna see how well this works, but we're gonna find our way towards the place that the the Persians and the Athenians and the Persians and the Greeks had their final showdown. So, um, the the Persians entreat the Athenians once again. Hey. You want to join us they say no but they tell the spartans hey you guys are really leaving us out to dry the persians have asked us to join they've given us a great offer meanwhile you guys are celebrating a, a festival again because the spartans every time they're they're needed their military prowess is requested they find themselves having a big party so this time it's about the highest cynthia this is i think this is someone's lover it's like apollo or artemis not artemis but uh some lover of some god uh, is being celebrated by the Hyacinthia. He even has a flower named after him. And the, the, the Athenians are like, hey, you need to stop partying, you need to help us. And the E4s kind of bide their time. They're like, eh, I don't know, like, we really, we really don't want to. Um, that seems really dangerous. We're building a wall across the Isthmus of Corinth, remember. Um, and at this time, the Isthmus of Corinth right now, this wall is very close to completion. Um, and so they're like, well, we might just want to stay down here. The Athenians are really getting upset about this for a decent reason. And uh, they, they're they getting frustrated. And then finally, the E4s, the, these leaders of Spartan society, say, oh, you know what? We actually sent them, sent out an army of, of 5,000 Spartan elites uh, just a few days ago. And the Athenians are like, oh, my God. Are you kidding me? And so then they, they gr grab a bunch of people. They start going back to Athens with the good news, and they take with them 5,000 perioikoi. And remember, the perioikoi are those <laughs> dwellers around peri, meaning perimeter, or meaning around the perioikoi being those people who live around Sparta but not aren't necessarily Spartans. So at this time, um, Mardonius, um, let's see, has made his way back to Athens. He's going all over the place, and this is 
this is one of the reasons I'm going to speed things up a little bit. But he go goes, he's in Thessaly, he comes through Boeotia, he goes to Athens, he finds it deserted. He's thinking that he can use Athens and the city and the people within it, who he's assuming have repopulated the city. He's assuming he can use that as a hostage. And he can say, hey, I won't destroy the city if you join with me and if you meet eyes. But he finds it abandoned, so he occupies it. And then uh, as he finds out that these uh, Peloponnesian troops under the leadership of Sparta are coming up north through the Isthmus, he abandons Attica and burns the entire city to the ground once again. So um, he then, let's see, they find themselves in this area, this Catharan foothills. We're going to check out, let's see if we can find Mount Catharon. And so in this area, this looks like, this might be Mount Catharon over here. In this area is the first place that the, the Greeks and the Persians uh, face off. And I'm looking in my, uh, my Herodotus. They have a picture of the, um, yeah, so this is the Mount Catharon ridgeline. And then over here, let's see, down here is where the, the Greeks first meet. So the Athenians and the Greeks make their way to a pass of this, Cather this Catharon. So it's probably somewhere here. Whereas, meanwhile, the Persians have set up their army all throughout this area. Now, again, this, this map isn't built to scale because Plataea is a little further away. Um, but at this time, the Persian cavalry are able to harass the Greeks um, and uh, and raid their supply lines. So the Greeks are down down here, a little bit in front of Plataea, and this is, I believe, the Esopus River. Anyway, this isn't to scale, so I'm not sure how much uh, I can really do in terms of battlefield nego uh, battlefield negotiation or or navigation, rather. But we will take a look at this. Um, and so this is the Esopus River. Over here lies Thebes. The Thebans, the, uh, the biggest city, the biggest polis in uh, Boeotia is over here, and they have joined the Persians. So the, the Thebans are maybe the main contributor of Greeks to the Persian force. However, the Persians or the Greeks north of Boeotia, in Boeotia north, uh, have mostly Medes. So there is a hefty contingent. Herodotus writes that there are about 300,000 Persians in uh, or Persians and their allies assembled, whereas there are about 70,000 Greeks. That gives us a rough idea of the proportions. So once again, we see about four to one, um, but w those numbers are likely exaggerations. All right, so we have the Greeks camped out here, and uh, there is a pass. There's a pass back here where uh, wagon trains are coming through. The Persian cavalry in the middle of the night fall upon one of these wagon trains, massacre everyone, take the wagons with them back to their lines, parade them about, and just leave the, cor the Greek corpses scattered. And so when the Greeks wake up that next day, they realize they're in big trouble. Uh, their, uh, their supply lines are being cut, and to make matters worse, the, Greek, or the Persian cavalry is uh, preventing them from getting water from the Esopus River. And also there is a spring. I don't think the spring is in this game, but th there's a spring of fresh water over here and the Persians begin to attack them and, and, and prevent them from getting fresh water from this spring, which means that the Greeks need to start doing something. Conversely, Mardonius, the, the Persian general, is, uh, is realizing that his plan is not working. The Thebans have said, Hey, just hide behind some walls and and try to bribe the Greeks to to start um, to start attacking each other or uh, or betraying each other and joining our side. This isn't working, and instead of the Greeks uh, gradually uh, disintegrating and their forces retreating back to their homelands, instead the Greek forces are being augmented day in and day out. And so by the time that a, about 10 days have passed, 10 or 11 days have passed with the, with the two armies fighting or facing off between these two sides. Uh, the Greek forces are now uh, growing tremendously. So in the middle of the night, the Greeks realize, or in the, uh, towards the evening, that same Macedonian king who had first asked the 
uh, Athenians to Medes then comes and says, hey, Mardonius is going to attack you tomorrow. And so in order to prepare for that, the Greeks uh, begin to move to try and get a better position and also uh, find a place where they are going to have access to fresh water because that is the main concern, especially with the Persian cavalry, um, preventing their access to the river and to the spring. Here we're going to find ourselves in Plataea. So the, the Greek forces start moving towards the city of Plataea. Plataea has been destroyed. If chat, does anyone remember where we've seen Plataea before? Uh, but the Persians have a very special reason to hate the Plataeans. And so when they encounter the city, they raise it to the ground. They, or they, they destroy it. And so the Greeks are coming towards the ruins of this city, which we see in its rebuilt form later on. Uh, the Plataeans were the only Greek polis that came as allies to help the Athenians at the Battle of Marathon, which is why the Persians hate them so much. So here we are in Plataea. This seems to be one of the central locations. And there is a waypoint somewhere or a marker that I can investigate. Oh, and it's over there. All right, so let's go this way. So the Greeks find their way to Plataea, as do the Persians. And on that day, um, they will finally be in combat. We're going to check out, we've already looked at the, the Plataean plain. We're going to check out this area of interest, this point of interest. And then we're going to switch once again to the um, to Rome Total War, where we're going to play the Battle of Plataea. And then that might be it. Um, we're very close to the end of the Persian Wars. And so, as I said, the, um, the amount of content in this game is running low, as is the ability for me to show you different places. But very soon we're going to start Thucydides and the Persian and the Peloponnesian War in the lead up to it, so the next 50 years. Uh, and we'll be able to come right back in. Um, Let's see, uh, Moon Mackerel, you'll be excited to know that Naxos is going to show up uh, in the next few weeks. Actually, um, so I should say in the middle of the stream, I've also posted it on the info, there will be no stream on Tuesday. I hope I don't lose either. That said, it's going to be a land battle, not a sea battle, so I'm better at land battles. I'm like the Spartans, and I'll probably play as the Spartans. Um, but next week, we're going to be doing something special in class, Dactylic Hexameter Week. Um, and then, we're, so I'm going to take the time to, we're going to look at the Oracle of Delphi. Uh, there's some cool tours there, some, some great places. Uh, then we're also going to lo look at the Olympics. So next week is going to be a big kind of uh, religious week to kind of to celebrate the, the victory of the Greeks over the Persians. And then after that, we'll start to look at the history of, the, of classical Greece from about 479 when this war ends to um, about 450 or so. Uh, that will be the first, the first uh, unit that we look at. So the Battle of Plataea. Here we've got a map of Plataea doing a lot better. So this is the first position, as I was mentioning. Uh, we've got the, the Persians here, the Athenians on the left, the Greek allies in the middle, and then the, the Lacedaemonians, the Spartans, and their, their helots. Each Spartan is coming with seven helot retainers, um, and the Perioikoi are on the right flank. However, uh, the second position is where they go to try to remedy their, um, to make their position stronger. They push the Persians back to the other side of the Esophis. The Persians create this camp here, um, which has walls, and this is where they stay for about 10 days. However, this is where they start to be harassed behind. The, the Persian cavalry is uh, attacking them as they try to get fresh water from Gargothia, which is the spring. Uh, and then this is also these passes. I should have just, I shouldn't have tried to do this with my bird's eye view. I should have tried to do this with um, uh, with this map. Um, but here we have a pass um, where the supply lines are coming through. And this is where the Persians ambush them. So uh, once it becomes clear that this position is untenable, the Greeks begin to retreat. And they, they initially retreat in the middle of the night. And the first, it's the various Greek allies. Um, and then the Lacedaemonians and the Athenians start to retreat uh, later to, to follow up the rear, but day breaks 
and the, per the, the Spartans are caught out uh, in the middle, which is terrifying. Uh, and there's this crazy moment, all, um, but here uh, there's this crazy moment that the, and I'll go into this in a little bit more depth in, in Total War when we're doing the battle, but as the Persians are descending on, on the, um, the Lacedaemonians, the Spartans are trying to give sacrifices to get the, uh, favorable oracles that, like, this battle's going to go well, and they keep, <laughs> and they keep uh, killing, like, goats and pigs and whatever to try to get these good or oracles, and the oracles keep coming up bad that this is going to go poorly for them. And so you've got Persians literally charging at you. You know, they're on horseback, they're riding at them, and they and this king, the the, the head of the army, just keeps uh, trying, just keeps slaughtering animals. And the animals keep having like rancid livers or gross stomachs or, you know, whatever entrails tell them that it's, it's a bad idea. So anyway, the Persians crushing defeat at the Battle of Salamis in 480 BC greatly discouraged King Xerxes from continuing his invasion. However, one of Xerxes' military commanders, Mardonius, convinced the king that their campaign could continue. This is, as I mentioned, um, first time chat from a viewer, overseer's take, welcome, welcome. So, uh, Mardonius' hopes were dashed the following year at the Battle of Plataea. As I've mentioned, Mardonius is the, uh, the main Greek antagonist during this invasion. Um, and he's, he's their, their arch enemy. The Greeks, who were outnumbered by the Persians, held their own in the open countryside. They fought until they were victorious, killing Mardonius in the process and putting an end to the second Persian invasion of Greece. So um, here we are at Plataea. This is where they finally held out. The Greeks were in front, and then the Persians uh, crossed the river Asopus and formed their line up opposite. All right, so we have completed Boeotia. Excellent. Um, and at this point, bear with me, I guess, unless there are any questions, we're going to move mosey our way on over to, uh, total war. Now, let me just change the game that we're playing. I don't want to sell anyone a bag of goods. Um, Rome total war. And... Let's pop this sucker open. So um, this time I have not created the battle ahead of time. I wanted to go, um, I wanted to go through this with you guys. Um, so as I mentioned, the uh, the Persians out outnumber the Greeks about four to one, um, and we have here the let's see. So we've got, uh, as Herodotus writes, 10,000 Lacedaemonians held the right wing, and of these, 5,000 were Spartans and 5,000 were Perioigoi. The right wing typically held the most powerful, um, the most powerful uh, forces, and the left wing the least powerful. And the idea was that the the most powerful, when faced off against the other, uh, the least powerful, right? Because right will face face off against left, they will crush the left side of your opponent's fastest and whoever does that first will turn the battle um will turn the flank and the battle will be over very quickly um at least that's what comes down to us so here we are we're not going to do a coastal battle we're going to do a land battle we're going to select the map we're going to look in so we can actually see here uh we see some major roots and we can see why platea kept getting in hot water platea is here so uh, you've got the route from Athens. You've got the route down, route down through Boeotia. This is Thebes over here, so Boeotia is down here, and then up through the Peloponnesus, and they're all going to meet at Plataea, and that is why we have a number of battles of Plataea. Let's see. Um, we're going to do. There is the Wrath of Sparta. I wish I could do this. However, there is no Persian option. There's just the Boeotian League. These are the um, the Thebans and their compatriots, Corinth and Sparta. So instead, we're going to do the Grand Campaign. I'm going to play as, I think I'm going to do Athens. Um, Sparta is an option. Sparta, however, is extremely Spartan. And remember, we've got the Athenians, we've got the Spartans, and we've got a number of Greek allies. Um, 
the Spartans chose the Tegeans to stand next to them. Uh, after them stood 5,000 Corinthians. Uh, there's Potidians and Pelines. There are Arcadians from Orchomenos, followed by 3,000 men of Sicyon. Uh, there are 800 Epidar Epidarians, 1,000 Troisianians, 200 men from Lepreon, 400 men from Mycenae, uh, 3,000 troops from Hermione, 6, from, 600 from Eritrea, uh, 400 from uh, Chalcidice, 500 Aegeanetans, 3,000 Megarians, 600 Plataeans, uh, and 8,000 Athenians. Okay, so that's what that's the the lineup that Herodotus gives. And Sparta, you only have um, Perio so we have Perioikoi, we have, um, and then we have the Spartan hoplites. Whereas the Athenians, which I would like to, which I'm leaning towards doing, they've got picked hoplites, uh, which can kind of act as the Spartans, like the very very good. Um, hoplites. We've got normal hoplites, um, thorax hoplites, picked hoplites. Yeah, so these are going to be, these are going to be our Spartans. So let's do picked hoplites here. That's going to be our general unit. We're going to do two more. Um, then we're going to do three units of hoplites, and we're going to do. Four units of light hoplites. So we, Herodotus writes that there's about 38 to 40,000. Uh, you think I'm going to lose? Okay, we'll see. I, I, I feel a little bit, a little bit better now that I'm on, I'm on land. Um, but uh, so we have here the, uh, these are going to represent the Spartans. These light hoplites are going to be those uh, Greek allies, and then the normal hoplites are going to be the. Athenians, and then they, Herodotus also writes that there's about 38,000 um, light infantry. So we're going to have some peltasts, and let's see, Thracian peltasts, Cretan archers. Do no, I don't think we're going to use those, but we are going to bring some more archers and some more javelins. And that is, oh, we are just over budget. Let's see, and you know what? Let's we'll take one of these guys out, um, and that can I afford anyone else? I don't think so. Okay, time to go to Armenia. Uh, last time, Eastern spearmen. This actually looks pretty good. Elite Persian archers. Ooh, I don't like the sound of that. Cappadocian cavalry. So this actually looks pretty solid. Um, you see the really oh man, this is kind of terrifying. Uh, the really powerful cavalry. <laughs> The Greeks don't have cavalry in this battle. Uh, as far as we know, we have hillmen, we have eastern spearmen. Let's see what Seleucia gives us. These are going to be relatively similar. Hellenic cap. Okay. So Seleucia, these, this is an eastern kingdom. This comes from about the, this is the three and two hundreds BC. We're going to go back to Armenia. This seems unless, we'll try Parthia as well. So we've got royal cataphracts, eastern spearmen. Persian light archers. So this is very similar to that first one. Median cavalry. Oh, well, Medes are good. Um, the Medes are, of course, a Persian ally. Persian hoplites. Okay, well, if we're if we're fighting the Persians, then we're going to have to bring some Persians on. Uh, we'll get rid of some hillmen. And we will bring in the Persian hoplites. Let's get rid of one more cataphract because I'm terrified of them. Ah, if I'm terrified, I should face them. We'll do horse archers. Oh, God, horse archers are the worst. Um, let's see, Sarmatian lancers. Missile cavalry. I guess we're going to have to do some missile cavalry. Um, got 1,300 left. That's a lot. Man, okay, now I am getting scared that I'm going to lose again. Okay, let's see how this goes. Here we are, Battle of Plataea. I have not tried this one before. Okay, so I'm going to make a... Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. How am I going to do this? Okay, so I don't know what Mardonius is going to do on, on the other side. He is across. This is... Whew, this is exactly... Huh, I am going to need it. Thank you. Um, this is exactly what the Greeks are most fearful of, this giant plane. Oh my god. This is this is going to enable the Persian uh, cavalry to really ride rampant all over this. We're going to have this... Uh, the Athenians... What? The Athenians were on the left flank this time, right? We're going to have the Spartans on the right flank. 
And I'm actually going to save a couple. Um, we're g I'm going to have the general unit in the back because general. it's likely that we're going to get flanked a little bit. I should probably have one more um, unit in the back as well because I just imagine the Persian cavalry are going to come around. We're going to have these archers behind. They're going to be able to pepper the... Um, Missile infantry they're going to be able to command. pepper the... Uh, Persians this entire time. And then, of course, we're going to have to make a sacrifice like Pausanias, the, the Persian commander, right? So uh, we're going to light our sacred fire, and we're going to get our braying uh, herds of swine. Okay, the sacred fire is not lighting. That is the first bad omen. So I'm feeling a lot like Pausanias right now. Um, this cannot go well. <laughs> the fire's not lighting. Hestia doesn't like us. Oh, God. This is going to be a disaster. You know, my hope is that I can... So once I finish Assassin's Creed, Sacred Fire is lit, finally. I'm getting a little nervous. Um, we're going to put these guys on. Oh, boy. Look at what this. They are all... Well collection of can I... How noble in okay, so we're going to... How splendid in attire. It will do them no good if you show them good okay, Can you hear that guy... Uh, roasting the the Persians okay so we are marching we're gonna we're just gonna walk I don't want to exhaust my troops too much so as this is happening oh my god my fire went out so this is just like Pausanias I feel I feel really worried oh man they took the high ground are they kidding me right now oh geez and they have fireballs are you kidding me this is absurd so they've got freaking fireballs that they're gonna light and they're gonna roll down this hill at me They've got cavalry that are going to charge. Ah, oh, shnikes. This is not good. We've got median cavalry here. Okay. So as this happens, what is my... I think I might try to get over here and try to uh, hit them from the flank. I'm not sure, because this side is off, off grounds. Let's see. I'm going to see where I'm marching. We're going to move this a little bit forward. Um, I've locked the, I've locked the, uh, position of them. So once it, once we get into this battle line, I think I'm going to swing around here and try to hit them on an oblique angle. Once again, I'm going to be walking, uh, because I don't want to exhaust my troops. They've already had a rough night, uh, being attacked by the Persian, by the Persian cavalry. Uh, many of us, many of us Greeks have had to re- position in the middle of the night. Don't forget that that's how the Battle of Plataea began. Um, that said, the Persians historically took the offensive. So, and they are, but they are not moving this time. So we're going to try to get around this, uh, and we're going to try to hit this hill on the side. Um, we're going to advance with our javelin men first. We're, let's, we're going to say that those javelin men are helots, so we really don't care if they live or die. Yikes. Not not the nicest thing in the world, but, you know, life's tough. And if you're a helot, life's even tougher. So, let's keep going. Man, these Persians are really not coming out to meet me. I'm really I'm a little disappointed. Um, I really hate that they have this, this epic fortified position. But, look, it's, um, oh, here we go. Look, this is my homeland. Um, it's going to be really sad for these j javelin men to be attacking uphill. But this is my homeland, and so it, it behooves me to force the, the barbarian out, right? Um, General! It does look, though, that it's unlikely that I will get flanked by cavalry. Oh god, I really... Yes, come on. These fireballs, I I really don't want to hit my front line, but, you know, worse things could happen. Fire on the enemy! Hoplites ready! Marching on up! So we've got... Peltasts! Now! These are, these Peltasts are jav javelin men, and the they're at, uh, they're on skirmish mode, so once they get engaged, they are going to. Spears um, ready. They're going to retreat back. Let's see. We've got Eastern spearmen. 
against my picked hoplites. So, luckily for us, luckily for us, our hoplites are far better than their infantry. That said, we don't have cavalry. Oh, no, we do not want this. Oh, God. And so, I'm going to start marching in. And I'm going to have our archers begin to attack. So these light hoplites, their, their center is very narrow. So I'm going to try to make hay while the sun shines. And we're going to charge right into them. And so here we have on our right flank probably uh, our best chance. These, these light hoplites are going to attack these eastern spearmen. And these archers are going to move up to try to get some, some extra shots in. Unfortunately, of course, these archers are firing uphill, which is not the best way um, to hit. That said, our uh, our picked hoplites are going to hit these guys in the flank. They're moving. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. That was sweet. Um, so we just had some some fireballs roll through my lines. That was less than sweet. But these light hoplites are in complete disarray. So we're going to have to build a hoplite wall. Rapid advance. Too late for that. Um, but okay, these picked hoplites, I think, are going to actually have to come into the back of the median cavalry because they are in desperate need. We're going to bring these hoplites in. And on this right flank, we're going to need to start uh, wrapping things up. So we have the hoplites here are about to get surrounded. Um, at least the people who are surrounding them are going to start getting hit in the back. But we are going to have these hoplites hit our aggressors, these Persian hoplites. Um, let's go. OK, so how's my line looking here? A mess, an absolute mess. Um, and these hoplites, so these hoplites are spearmen. These are light hoplites going up against royal cataphracts, uh, which is probably not going to, uh, I don't know. These royal cataphracts are super strong, but Missiles. as spear Ready infantry, they are going to have Use an the advantage. Uh, these picked hoplites are up against these eastern Other spearmen. Your orders. Light hoplites as well against the medium cavalry. We're going to start to push up the shield walls. I think the shield, let's see. I really need these pick lock lights to make quick work of these eastern spearmen so that we can start wrapping up the flank as soon as I can get uh, one side one side wrapped up that's going to be really helpful okay over here we have um, these hoplites are wavering so I'm going to use my general to can you do anything I don't know if battle rhythm is going to help but we can try um, and so here we have this hoplite battle these hoplites, as we can see, have hit those, so my hoplites are here, they were getting attacked by these guys in the back, and now my hoplites have come to the back as well. And they were killing the Persian hoplites here. This general, I'm going to try to get around the flank. Man, this is not good. My, so I thought the center was where it was going to happen. Not even close. So I'm going to bring these hoplites up. Looks like my uh, picked hoplites on the right side are rolling up these eastern spearmen. But as you can see, there are a number of my troops that are getting uh, this Vagilist, welcome. Um, this is the Battle of Plataea. It did not go nearly as planned, um, but this hopefully is going to be the final confrontation between Barbarian and Greek. Um, let's see, are all of my... Are these guys firing? No. Oh, dear. Oh, and here the median cavalry have come through. So I think we might just turn my, my uh, archers into cannon fodder. But on the other hand, I'm gonna I might be able to try to get these light hoplite, hoplites to come down and try to protect them. These light hoplites are also going to try to make a quick move against the medians. 
The glory! Spin at the ready. Cut them down, Commander. A charge! As you can out of pop light walls so that they are more maneuverable. And they have managed to catch. Oh man, these light hop lights are really they're not as strong as I would like. Over here, oh, my general is ready. Oh, but look at this, these noble, oh, freaking hell. Um, these horse archers are just gonna run away. So I'm gonna try to hit them with my, with my archers. Over here in the back, it looks like I've had some success uh, getting the, uh-oh, these guys have used all their their weapons. Well, this is in defense of three, so trying to throw yourselves at them without your main weapon. Okay. Oh, these guys have also used all their ammo. Up to you? Man, these dice. It is not good when you've got sending javelin and men in with, uh, what, daggers? Uh, Michios. So that's what it's going to be like. We've got the Persians. Uh, the Persian contingent was one of the fiercest. General! Engage! These guys are getting hit in the back, which, oof, not great. Archers! But at least uh, the noble horse archers Missile are sticking around long ready. enough to take good damage. Now this is Orders. going to be a near run thing. These light hoplites. And how is this side? Spear infantry, ready. We'll take a Take us out of hoplite wall. Oh dear, Parthian sword. Let's hammer these guys. Light hoplites, hammer and anvil style. We're got hoplite wall, and then these guys. Oh, where, where are you going? Where are you running to? I don't know where they're going. I think they're just running down the hill to try to flank. We're gonna bring these hoplites up and try to engage them on this left flank so that we can start to do something. Oh my goodness, these Peltas are way too far and, well, at least they're dying for a good cause. Down here in the bottom, these light hoplites are getting wrecked by the Parthian swordsmen. These pink hoplites, like, they're doing good work against the, these eastern cataphracts. These are one of the um, most, these are going to be one of the most powerful units on the, on the field right now. Uh, and now that the cataphracts are retreating, I think we're going to hit these eastern spearmen in the back. Spears, Looks like we are actually... The, the center up. did hold. March. So we're going we're gonna to annihilate these eastern spearmen. And then I think we're going to be able to start advancing these pick hop lights. Coming up. We're going to move Missile our archers infantry. to the top of the hill. This was... This is a lot closer than I was hoping. Um... Hop lights. Yeah, basically, I guess we should pronounce Greek General, like we're, we're British. As you command. Uh, and just drop all the H's. Hop lights ready. Oh, double time. Your orders. Right. Looks Charge. like these royal cataphracts are the last ones here. Royal, They're on. completely mired in uh <laughs> in killing my poor javelin men, with uh who don't have any javelins. They got these little swords and these little shields. Poor guys are just getting absolutely screwed up, and here the pop lights are showing up. And here we get our nice pop light phalanx. Let's see if we can. Uh, okay, get our pop light wall, and you can see all these missiles raining down down here. These eastern cataphracts are hopefully going to fall soon. We'll look at these pop lights. And that is a victory. Oh, thank goodness. That would, oh, I really, I'm glad I got one victory. So we killed 2,000 out of 2,600 and we lost about half of our troops. So not terrible. Um, these pick hoplites really did a number. You can see that the hoplites are amazing. And you can also see why they, the Greeks didn't rely too heavily on the, um, too heavily on the ranged infantry. These guys got far fewer kills. The uh, the ca the cavalry are going to be the main source of their power, um, and def and what the Greeks don't have access to because of their their terrain. Uh, but that went okay. 
All right. Um, so as I've mentioned, today is going to be a relatively shorter one. Uh, Battle of Plataea, we are now done with the Persian invasions. Um, I guess uh, next week, tune in. Next Sunday, uh, I'll give a little epilogue for the whole thing. Um, but for now, we've seen the Battle of Plataea. In that battle, Mardonius was killed, Mardonius being the general. He came out on a uh, beautiful white destrier uh, horse, looking all good. Um, Fagulus, what do you, you got? Tell me, what are you doing at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Pacific time? Uh, because if you want, you could give us a little. If you want to be a guest speaker in our class, you could uh, you could come and give us a little rundown of. It's 4:50 a.m. Yeah, that's what I thought. What are you doing? What are you doing up now? That's my question. Um, so, okay, 4:50 means that you are. 10 hours ahead of time, uh, ahead of us. So that would actually, that would be 7 p.m. your time. If you want to do a, a little guest lecture for our class, you're invited, let me know. Um, but uh, for now, this is going to be my shortest stream yet, uh, but in the next week um, on Sunday, we're going to start up again. We're going to be doing, I think we'll do Delphi first, a guest lecture. Yeah, you could, you could give us, a, you could tell us about the um, pronunciation freak and I mean, you could come into my class and you could you could tell us some uh, some perspective or you could even tell us about the uh, how Greeks learn this uh, as part of their national education rather than, um, uh, you know, as just a weird elective that I decided to teach. Um, so, yeah. So if you wanted to come in and give us a little a little rundown, you are uh, more than welcome to. But next week, tune in. Uh, so I'm skipping this Tuesday. My apologies. Uh, my roommate and my girlfriend are doing an open mic, which is very exciting. Uh, so I have to be there in support. Um, but then on Sunday, we will do Delphi. And then the following Tuesday is going to be uh, the Olympics. Yeah, I am unfortunately ending now. The games, unfortunately, have, have basically run out of any content that I can use for the Persian Wars. And so I'm going to stop. Lest, I mean, I could just lecture, but I think, I think I'm, I'm not going to lecture uh, on, on Twitch. I'll, I'll save that for, for class. So for those of you who tuned in for my class, I, will, I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We are going to wrap up the Battle of Salamis in class, and then we will have... Um, we will have potentially the final battle. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think I can lecture. No, I don't, I don't really want to. Um, but, and, and if I do lecture, I'd like to have the background of a, um, of a class. So um, in the meantime, I will see most of you guys tomorrow. And for those of you I will not see in class, I look forward to seeing you on stream next Sunday in one week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you learned something.